Pokemon is a household name everywhere in the world as of right now. I don't think there is a single person who hasn't at least heard its name. And as with any big game, the English localization of Pokemon is very important in terms of how the English-speaking population, which is pretty big, perceives this game. Whenever someone makes a comment about Pokemon's English localization, most people immediately think of poor kids' jelly donuts. Pika. These donuts are great! Jelly filled are my favorite! Nothing beats a jelly filled donut! However, Pokemon as a game has offered us much more than that, and I'm here today to show you that. Hello everyone and welcome, this is Localization Addict, I'm Hagane and today in Let's Talk Localization, we're going to analyze some of the most interesting aspects of the differences between the original Japanese script and the English localization in Pokemon. For this video, we will be analyzing the differences in the first generation by making a case study on Pokemon Red and Green. So, without further ado, let's get started. There are three main points of interest when it comes to how the original script and the English localization differ from each other. The first one is the names of places. As you may know, each region in Pokemon represents a real geographical place in the world. In Pokemon Red and Green, the only area available is Kanto, which, as you may know after watching my video on dialects, which you should check out if you haven't, is a real region in Japan which includes Gunma, Tochigi, Ibaraki, Saitama, Tokyo, Chiba and Kanagawa. What's interesting about this area in particular is that the city's names are all linked to a color. I'm going to go through each place in particular, explain the original Japanese and analyze how the English localization managed to transcreate its own words. The first city we get to in the game is the classic Pallet Town, also known for being Ash Ketchum's hometown. In Japanese, it's called Masara Town. Masara is a reference to white, but as some of you may know, the Japanese word for white isn't really present in this word. White is shiro. So, why can we say that it references the word white without the word being there? Well, first, let's take a look at the word Masara is making a direct reference to. Masara. This word means brand new or fresh, and the reason why this is linked to the color white is that the creators intended this place to be uncontaminated, clean of all impurities, a place that represented the start of the adventure. You could say they wanted Pallet Town to be a blank slot, which is where the link to the color white comes from. White represents purity and freshness. It is in this way that the original manages to make a very subtle but on point reference to the color white in its name. Now let's take a look at what the English localization did. How did this become Pallet Town? Well, what comes to mind is that they took the fact that white is formed by adding all of the colors together and made their own reference. Then, after that, they misspelled it on purpose, just like the original is a misspelled form of the word Masara. I think this is a great example of transcreation done well. Instead of translating literally or not even bothering with creating their own metaphor, they created a reference to the color white that is both subtle and clever in English. After leaving Pallet Town, the player finds themselves in Viridian City. In Japanese, the name of this city is Tokiwa City. This one is more straightforward than Pallet Town. Tokiwa means evergreen, which, as you may have guessed, is a type of green. This one to be specific. And city is the way Japanese transliterates the English word city. This color is often found in pine trees. So, why did the English localization turn evergreen into viridian? Well, my guess would be that the word viridian is more often used to refer to the type of green that the keyword refers to than evergreen. Let's use one of the most useful tools for every kind of job, Google. According to Google, viridian is a blue-green pigment relatively dark in value. Evergreen is primarily a mixture of green and cyan, and Tokiwa is a type of dark green with a tint of brown such as that found in pine trees and other evergreen trees. These definitions kinda make it sound as though they were all different colors, doesn't it? Let's take a look at Google Images to compare. As you can see on the screen, these are all different colors. However, I think the detail which ultimately made the localization team decide to pick the name Viridian was the fact that this color is more often found in the kinds of trees that the original color is referring to, as you can see on the screen right now. I'm not very knowledgeable in color theory, 
So if someone in my audience could tell exactly what the difference is between Evergreen and Viridian, leave it in the comments below. Next comes Pewter City. In Japanese, it's called Nibi City, which comes from the word Nibi, which is a shade of dark grey, it looks something like this, and the word City, which, as we just discussed, is the way Japanese transliterates the English word City. So what is Pewter and what does it have to do with dark grey? Well, Pewter is a type of metal characterized by its dark grey color. Basically, what the localization did here was take the essential meaning of dark grey and look for a word that would encompass that in the least amount of characters possible. I have to admit that this was maybe a little bit too subtle, not to say convoluted, way to convey the same meaning. Our next destination is Cerulean City. In Japanese, this is called Hanada City, which is a combination of the word Hanada Iro, which is a light indigo color, and City. So, why did light indigo turn into cerulean? Well, that's because cerulean is the same shade as Hanada Iro, but neatly summed up in one word instead of two. Remember, the localization team struggled with a strict character limit at all times, which is why the shorter the option, the better. The following city you as a player get to is Vermilion City. The original Japanese name for this place is Kuchiba City, which comes from Kuchiba Iro, a shade of brown, and the already mentioned city. Now, this is the first city in which I see a big change between the color represented in the original and the color proposed in the English localization. Kuchiba Iro is not really a strong and vibrant color the same way Vermilion is. So, why did this change happen? Well, I can only guess since I didn't work on this localization, but what I think happened is that since some shades of Kuchiba Iro can be red, they took that possibility and used it to their advantage in order to use a word that sounds cool. Vermilion City sounds much stronger than Yellow Brown City and is also shorter. However, this interpretation, as well as all of my interpretations, could be wrong, so take them with a grain of salt. After passing through Cerulean City, we get to the infamous Lavender Town. In Japanese, this city is called Sion Town, which is made of the words Sion, which means lavender, and town, which is the way Japanese transliterates the English word town. There is nothing in particular to mention here. However, there is one thing I wanted to mention, and that is how lavenders are linked to a couple of things in Japanese culture. Lavenders are often left in Butsudan, which are shrines made often as a way to protect a certain godly figure, such as Buddha, and they are also left in funerals, since their meaning in the language of flowers is I'll never forget you. Kinda takes the creepiness of this place to another level, don't you think? Next, the player finds themselves going to Saladin City. In Japanese, this place is called Tamamushi City, which comes from Tamamushi Iro, a color that is named after this bug that you can see on the screen, and the already mentioned city. Now, Tamamushi Iro is one of those colors that doesn't have a direct translation into English. So, how did the English localization handle this? Well, they basically took another object which had a similar feel to the Tamamushi, in this case the Saladin, and named the city after it. Here's what a Saladin looks like versus what a Tamamushi looks like. Although not exactly the same, you can clearly see where the localization team got this idea from. I think this was a clever way to handle the lack of a proper term in English. Kudos to the translation team. We're approaching the end of our journey when we visit Fuxia City. In Japanese, this city is called Sekichiku City, which comes from Sekichiku Iro, a shade of light pink, and the aforementioned city. Although both the English localization and the Japanese original are referring to the color pink, they do so in two completely different tones. The English localization once again takes the base color and turns it into a much brighter and vibrant color, whereas the Japanese original is almost pastel. Once again, this was probably an attempt to make the city stand out more, since there isn't an exact equivalent of the Sekichiku color. The penultimate city we get through is Saffron City. In Japanese, this is called Yamabuki City, which comes from Yamabuki Iro, a shade of yellow similar to amber, now, if we look at both colors on Google Images, we can see that they are pretty much the same. 
But why choose saffron when you could have chosen amber? Well, my guess for why this change may have happened is that both Yamabuki and saffron are referencing names of flowers as well as colors. In this sense, the English translation managed to convey this interesting double meaning in a way that was quite clever in my opinion. Again, kudos to the translation team. Finally, our journey ends with Cinnabar Island. In Japanese, this is called Gurento, where Guren comes from Guren Iro, which is a bright red color, and To means island. As we can see, they both went with word choices that evoked an image of something bright red. The English localization went a step further and also linked it to a precious stone, which is interesting since this is the last part of the game. You could even say it's a hidden gem. I think it was a pretty cool addition made to the original. The second point of interest when it comes to this game is the names of Pokemon species. Each Pokemon has its own unique name in Japanese that is often very different from its English localization, especially in the first generations. Let's look at the National Pokedex to see what exactly happened that triggered these changes. Right off the bat, it's worth noting that only 4 Pokemon have had their name left untranslated and just transcripted it instead. Pikachu, Raichu, Mew and Mewtwo. Pikachu was already the Pokemon company's mascot before the games were released in English, thanks to the anime being broadcast shortly before the English version of Red and Blue existed, and its evolution hasn't been translated either, probably as a way to keep the content consistent. Mew and Mewtwo were already pretty much an English onomatopoeia, so it makes sense that their names weren't changed either. Since there are way too many Pokemon, we're just going to mention the three initial ones and their respective evolution in each game we cover. In Pokemon Red and Green, we have Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle as our initial Pokemon. These names are very different from their Japanese counterparts, which are Fushigidane, Hitokage and Zenigame. The original names are actually puns, which are not possible to translate directly into English. Let's see first what happens in the original version and then in the English localization. Fushigidane is a combination of the words fushigi, which means strange or marvelous, and dane, which means seed. However, there is a double meaning here, where if you put fushigi and dane together, they become the phrase strange, isn't it? Or marvelous, isn't it? As you can see, the original is trying to make an association between these Pokemon and plants. This is taken care of by the English localization by adding the word bulb, which is an organ present in plants. Then there is the second meaning behind this name, which is that of something strange or marvelous. This was taken care of by the English localization in the form of adding the suffix soar, which is a commonly used word for dinosaurs that comes from Greek. But what does this have to do with something strange or marvelous? Well, my guess is that they went with something that resembled the physical appearance of this Pokemon while also being out of this world. Dinosaurs are strange, or at least rather unusual in our world. At least, that is my take on why this change happened. Next, we have everyone's favorite, Charmander. Its Japanese name is Hitokage, which is a combination of the words he or fire and tokage or lizard. Yes, it's just called fire lizard. In English, its name is a little bit more fancy. Charmander comes from the verb to char, which means to partially burn so as to blacken the surface, and salamander, which is a type of lizard. I think this change was incredibly clever and it shows an outstanding job on the parts of the translators working on this game. After that, we get Squirtle. In Japanese, its name is Senigame, which is made of the words seni, meaning coin, and game, which means turtle. However, Senigame as a whole means small pond turtle, so it's actually a real word. In the English localization, its name comes from the words to squirt and turtle. Here we can see once again the hard work and all the thought poured into this localization and I think it's beautiful. Now let's see how their evolutions change in the English localization. Bulbasaur evolves into Ivasaur, whose Japanese name is Fushigiso. This word is made up of the same Fushigi present in Bulbasaur, except that instead of using the word seed, it uses the word so or grass. This also creates a double meaning similar to that in Bulbasaur's name. 
Except that instead of it meaning strange, isn't it? It means it seems strange or it seems marvelous. What the English localization did was keep the sore part and exchange boba for ivy, which is a kind of plant. A similar thing happens with Venusaur. Its Japanese name is Fusigibana, which is composed of the same Fusigi word plus bana, which means flower. What the English localization did was keep the sore part intact and add the name of a flower, the Venus flytrap. I think it's amazing that they managed to assemble these names without making them sound weird or awkward. Next, we have Charmander's evolutions, Charmeleon and Charizard. Charmeleon's Japanese name is quite easy to understand to an English speaker since it's the Japanese transliteration of the word lizard, Rizado. You might be wondering, why did this change happen? Fire lizard and Rizado don't seem to have any correlation. Well, the way I see it, Hitokage is the simplest way to refer to a fire lizard. It's almost childish. However, Nizado is one step up. It's using an English word rather than a Japanese one. A device often used in Japanese media to make something look or sound cooler. This makes the sentence sound slightly more grown up. And Charizard's Japanese name is that same idea but with an N at the end. Nizadom. The N at the end comes from dragon. Meaning that now not only is it cooler and more adult-like, now it's also a dragon on top of all that. The way the English localization handled things was by looking at the big picture of Charmander's evolution and trying to go for something that made sense. This is why each new evolution includes the name of another lizard. I do think it would have been interesting to include the word dragon in Charizard's name and have it be named something like Charigon, for example. Lastly, I wanted to take a look at Squirtle's evolutions and how they were localized. First, we have War Turtle. Its Japanese name is Kameru, which is a combination of the words Kame or turtle and Meru, which is a transliteration of the English word male, as in the one used in war, like the one you can see on the screen. What the English localization did here is take the word male, extrapolate it and find a general theme that could go well with the word turtle since that's what they used for Squirtle as well. The result was a very natural sounding name, War Turtle. Again, I can't stop praising the team for making such fantastic natural names. War Turtle then evolves into Blastoise. This time, Turtle was changed to Tortoise. In Japanese, it's called Kamekusu, a combination of the words Kame or Turtle and Makkusu, the transliteration of the English word Max. Here, what's interesting to me is that the English localization took this max as a way to make the character sound more powerful, thus explaining the blast in the word blastoise, a tortoise that blasts. As a bottom line, I wanted to say that I absolutely love the localization work done on Pokemon and that's why I wanted to show you all the magic behind such an absolutely outstanding job. This has been all for today. Stay tuned for part 2. If you like this video and would like me to make more videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe. I wanted to give a special thanks to my friend Alexis for helping me put this series of videos together. See you next time!